Welcome to our Inspiration Coffee Break for Leaders and the burning question, <laughs> how does the new way in business look like after Corona? And welcome our guest today, Dr. Steve Taubman, who will Thank help you. us understand uh, why an organization will work at its best as a holistic system these days and how our body can tell us more stories about this holistic system. So welcome, uh, Steve. It, it's, I'm so honored and I'm so passionate about having you today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, it's been yeah. such a pleasure to meet you and, and, <laughs> and sort of pre-chat about this topic. Well, as you know, I spent many years uh, as a chiropractor. Exactly. And, yeah. So, so uh, you are a chiropractor, you are a renowned mindfulness coach. Yes. So you will help us really build the bridge from the body and how the body can cope and actually handle uh, complexity and uncertainty. So Steve, how does the body work with that? Well, that's a great question. You know, one of the things that we uh, learn in chiropractic is this notion of holism, the idea that our bodies uh, operate as, as an integrated system, each part working with the other, each part communicating with the other in a very complex way. And uh, our educated intelligence is never a match for the complexity of the human body, which is why, by its very nature, allopathic medicine is always trying to catch up right. with the body. I, so, I like this idea already because, you know, in production, in automotive production, any production, they yeah. have to handle complex systems. Yes. So now, uh, let, let sh please just share, what is your insight about the body and how to handle this complexity and uncertainty? Well, starting out with the human body is, uh, is in order for it to handle complexity that comes its way, it's gotta have a million different sensors out, a billion, a trillion different sensors out. It's got to constantly be uh, getting insight and information from everywhere which means that each part is empowered to receive information and pass that information along. Well, and, that sounds like then, distributed power, like in, in production, distributed in teams. Is that true? Well, exactly, exactly. And we also find that it's ultimately, whenever you look at a system that's falling apart, it's very seldom one piece or one part or one individual. What it really is, is the, is the communication between the parts. Right? So as a chiropractor, we're treating the spine in order to remove interference to the spinal nerves so that the brain and the body can be in communication with one another. And if there's anything blocking that communication, it's going to show up in the system as a whole. Right. This is very true of business as well. Often it's yeah. the communication. The brain being the headquarter and the, and there the, you go. Being the yeah. workers. <laughs> you need right. a communication between the two. And, and it starts out, I mean, really, it does start out from the brain, but it's a brain that's willing and able to receive information on a constant basis. You know, if you think about it, ever since the very first paramecium or amoeba split into two, mm -hmm. the, the integrity of that system, whether it was two cells or 30 trillion cells like we are, operated primarily on the ability of each of them to know what the other one was doing at all times. So... What would that mean in an organization? How could they uh, leverage that knowledge? How could they well, operate point, in the same way? Yeah, in the same way that uh, now there's this thing called telemedicine where you could be wearing a monitor and be constantly aware of, you know, like your doctor could know what your blood pressure is all the time instead of the one time you come into the office every six months, that constant ability to maintain data we as business leaders can start to to amass data on a more regular and consistent basis perhaps uh by a different kind of monitoring systems we've got so much computer technology available to us we also have the capacity and ability and willingness perhaps to uh start having more um not long meetings because meetings can be very counterproductive but just yes. check in or, <laughs> or or what in in the military they call uh uh, there's above, down, and also below, up refinement. So the head gives a command, right? The leader gives a command down to the down to the very privates, and then the privates who go out into the field are able to say, 
well, this won't work for this reason, or this won't work for this reason. And that information has to be able to make its way back up to the leader who can then refine the signal, refine the, the demand. And so this constant checking in from above down and below up is a really important piece of the puzzle. Right. Uh, and, and nowadays, you know, we are in this Corona situation. We are in a crisis situation. Uh, we have lots of people working in home offices. Yes. Uh, uh, we cannot, you know, it's, it's, it's much more difficult to control them these days. If you want to control them at, at all, <laughs> or have the illusion of control. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, what, what knowledge can we take from the body to operate differently in these times? It, because there's an overflow of information. Uh, there is a, you know, people are dispersed. So how can we approach it differently? I think one of the things that we can do is, um, a part of that is trusting all the various parts as well, right? So if you're at home working, um, I've got, to, uh, I've got to have established the kind of a relationship with you that tells me I can trust Hans at home doing his work and I don't have to overmanage him, but I wanna have certain metrics or certain, you know, certain things that I could check in with, not necessarily how you're doing it or what time of the day you're doing it, the way we used to control people by saying, get here at nine o'clock and leave at five, and if you get it here at 901, it means you're late. You know, that was our conception of control. But nowadays, control is a much more fluid experience. I've got to be able to know that you can, you know, kind of jive and jive based on what needs to happen. <laughs> maybe it means that, you know, the kids have a problem and you're not going to work from nine to five. You're going to work from 10 to six. Or maybe you're going to get more work done in three hours. My concern as a leader is, are you present? Are you focused? Are you doing what you do with absolute integrity? And maybe I get to find that out by something that nobody's even thought of yet. Maybe we come up with some, maybe right. we come up with kind of a measure of presence right. and check in with people. Steve, this, this notion of presence, mm -hmm. th that's interesting to me now. Because, you know, wh what do you mean by presence? And how can presence help... Uh, handle an overwhelming situation or a situation that you feel is out of control. So maybe you can elaborate more on the presence. Yes, I, it's, it's really one of my favorite topics and I love getting to this point. <laughs> uh, and especially because if we have people who are watching this who are leaders, right? If you're a leader, um, yeah. you're a capacity to, uh, to cultivate this thing we're about to describe called presence will filter down in your organization. There's, a, there's something that's very contagious about this quality of presence. So what does presence look like? It looks like an individual who is able to be so completely focused in the here and now, or whatever the task at hand is, that nothing is distracting from that. Not only is no activity distracting from it, but no thought is distracting from so, it. So, so great, great, Steve. But I mean... Typically, the way our brain works, yeah. there are, I don't know, how many thoughts every second. Yes. So are you suggesting I somehow get rid of all the other thoughts? So how, how can I potentially uh, utilize my brain or utilize my mind? Or what, what, what is the way through that, cutting through that? We're aware now that there's a remarkable capacity that we have to direct our attention through the power of commitment and focus to a single area that, that demands or, or, or invites our attention. And if we understand that, we start practicing the art. Now, it's not like all those other thoughts disappear. You can't, you know, I mean, maybe I could do that to you, but you wouldn't live a very good life or you wouldn't live very long. But, but if at the same time, it's like, you know the difference between sitting in a room with um, kids playing in the background and they're all making sure. noise and they're screaming yeah. and everything. And you're like, and you're trying to read, but you're like, will you shut up? And what about, yeah. and Steve, we call this homeschooling. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's one way that we interact with our environment is we're, we're drawn off by the various things that are happening in our environment. Then there's the other experience that you've also probably had where you're, you're, you're reading something fascinating or you're watching a fascinating documentary and, and, and all of a sudden you hear somebody saying, dad, 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 dad. And, and you're like, oh, I'm sorry. I was so focused sure. that I didn't even hear you, right? 
This is presence. Presence is where you become so completely absorbed by the thing that you've chosen to absorb yourself in that the distractions don't affect you. Now that also, why that's so important is not just because you're more efficient when you're absorbed in a single thing, but because a lot of these distractions we're talking about are the distractions of your own thoughts, not little kids, not, you know, uh, the horns honking in the background, but your own thoughts, which are very elusive, very, you know, kind of sticky. They want to pull you in. And sometimes if you're, a, if you're working in a company or you're leading a company and some of those thoughts have to do with worry or fear sure. or frustration with other employees. Absolutely. And if you find yourself getting lost in those thoughts, uh, that, that makes you less efficient and probably less capable of communicating effectively with the people with whom you've got to have a communication. I've got to be able to meet you as clean as possible. We've got a, a technique we'll talk about shortly that, that speaks to this, but it really comes down to, can I almost like part the waters, get down yeah. to it, I, and, I can relate to that. Okay. I, I think many, many of my clients can relate to it in terms of focusing on one topic and yet at the same time with all our open door policies, with our uh, working in big rooms and, and, you know, working on multiple projects, mm -hmm. the reality also is that there is there is a multitude of things happening at the same time. So does it require to be able to focus and have the senses still open to realize uh, what other information is also important? So is there just one thing or is it the capacity of doing both, being open and present? It's a great question. I mean, you know, certainly a lot of the research in regard to multitasking is that multitasking is not the most efficient way to, <laughs> yeah. to get anything done. So, you know, so whenever, man, right? <laughs> yeah. So whenever possible, you know, having the, the maximum focus on a single thing is really valuable. But I think what we what leaders can learn to do is to to almost have a little piece of consciousness reserved for those things that are kind of coming in and yet at the same time have the capacity to assess the importance of like, if this little thing, this little distraction, this little person walking into my office in that moment proves to be something that alarms something in my brain that says this demands more attention. Well, then I've got to have the presence of mind to say, that's a great question. That's something we definitely want to address. Let's get it on the calendar. Right. And let's, let's, let's block off a period of time to discuss it because the reality is if I allow myself to really, drive my attention away from the thing that I'm primarily focused on for even a moment. The neurological research shows that it takes 20 to 30 minutes for our focus to, or for our efficiency to come back to full, right. uh, full maximum capacity. And Steve, I, I remember you telling me silencing is mm -hmm. one of the tools that help you being present. So can you just for you know, a short answer to that one, help us understand what is it and how do we do it? Yeah, and, and, and especially because if, if you're a leader and you don't have the, the, the tools to achieve a degree of silence within, uh, what you're basically doing is you're co constantly re-stimulating your adrenal axis. You're constantly you know, excreting adrenaline and cortisol and raising your stress levels. And that's why a lot of leaders become stressed out and diabetic and fat because, or, and have heart disease because they haven't learned the, the, the art of silence. And what is silence? Well, silence is, is knowing how to, um, to filter all that other stuff and just kind of come into the present moment. And it's a, it's a practice. It's something that we all need to do because if, if the system as a whole is a holistic system, right? If this organization looks like this and everything is communicating with everything else, well, where does it start? It starts up here. It starts with the top. It starts with the leader. And so the leader himself or herself is a, in, in, within him and herself a holistic system. Everything has to communicate. Everything has to jive. And for it to all jive, I've got to have smooth transmission, not a lot of clutter. So I've got to be able to get very, very zen, be here now, get present, get quiet. And how do I do that? Well, I do it by practice. And how do you practice? Well, it's a very interesting, simple, but not easy thing. And I call it getting out of your head and into your body. 
yeah, this is where we want to <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> so get out of your head and into your body. How does that work? Well, if I were to ask you to sit quietly, as in meditate, or if I were to ask you to take a walk in the woods and observe the beauty around you, or if I were to ask you to wash your dishes, or whatever task I put in front of you, there's going to be a part of you that's going to be doing the activity, following your breath, walking and looking at the trees, washing the dish. It's going to be another part of you that's looking for something else to think about. So I'm washing the dishes, but I'm also watching TV and listening to the radio and yelling at my kids and thinking about the fight I had with my husband and planning dinner. All those things going on at the same time makes me crazy, right? And my brain never gets to kind of equilibrate, to get quiet. Whereas somebody who has learned this skill of, when I wash this dish, it's the only thing in the world. And then I put it down and I pick up my next dish and it's the only thing in the world. And I know in advance that my consciousness is not trained, like you said, human nature is only to be going here and there. But with practice, you can become very, very good at so bringing your what, attention. Steve, what would be my first step uh, at office? Like I'm in the office or I'm anywhere. Mm -hmm. What my first step to, to kind of come into this mode of silencing? Well, I would first of all probably recommend that your office not be the first place you practice it because doing <laughs> it in a noisy office takes a little bit more effort, but, but very simple activity could be, uh, I'm sitting here in the chair right now. And uh, as I said, it's to get out of your head and into your body. So I'm talking to you and talking to other people. And now what I do is I just say, okay, for the next 30 seconds, I'm going to feel the weight of my body as it presses into the chair beneath me. And I'm just going to bring all my attention to that. Just notice the sensations in my body. Notice my breath as it enters and leaves my lungs. And just let that become the primary focus of your attention. Now, the beauty of this is that when you try to stop thinking, it never works, right? I say, okay, Hans, yes, sure. <laughs> yeah, stop thinking, oh, Stefan, stop thinking for the next you know, 10, uh, 10 minutes. And, and you're like, am I thinking? Am I thinking? And now you're thinking about if you're thinking or not. So you can't stop thinking. But what you can do, I could say to you, okay, Stefan, um, for the next uh, minute, if a thought arises, that's fine. Notice it, but then bring your attention back to the sensation of your body as it presses into the chair. It becomes much easier to create an automatic experience of silence because your attention is no longer, it, the locus of your attention is no longer in your head, it's in your body. Yeah. And it's very but, animalistic, yeah. really. It's a very, you know, kind of natural, yeah. primal thing to just be in your body. Now, while you're doing that, and maybe taking some deep breaths, just oxygenating your system and, and, and you know, limiting the, uh, the degree of, of those uh, stress hormones and maybe blowing off some carbon dioxide and, and alkalizing your system makes you infinitely more effective. So that few moments of silence, of getting out of your head and into your body will make you more effective and more efficient and put yeah. you in a better mood and make you better and able to I, experience I, everything else. Yeah, I can sense it. It is to me an experience I call being grounded. Yes. Being grounded means being in my body. And, you know, most men or leaders that I know, when you ask them about emotional intelligence, they go like, ooh. But it's just weird it's stuff. Ooh, <laughs> weird stuff. But if you talk about the body, they, they can relate to it. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Steve, that was very insightful. I, I guess we have to do another episode. We have, we to, do. We we have to, do, right? to do an episode about maybe practicing that uh, silencing stuff. <laughs> yeah, maybe how to use it in how you interact with yeah, others. You exactly. use to deepen those relationships. To deepen and, those relationships. Yeah. Um, I'm incredibly grateful for our session today. And uh, by all means, you know, in this situation, we are better together. That's for sure. Absolutely. I invite everyone to comment below, raise questions, because that is the way that as a community, we can co-create the future. And I invite everybody to come along. And next week, uh, I will talk to Jeff Allen. Jeff Allen is a CEO and a business coach uh, from the UK. And he will help us understand how leadership will change in COVID times and why leadership is hearing the calls for help. So be inspired. What else? Cheers. Cheers.